Okay, here we go. We'll go ahead and get started here. Um, first off, what I would like to do is just introduce myself. So, hi everyone. My name is Brian Wilms, and I'm with the telehealth team for Interior Health. Um, and today, I'm going to be going over um, some of the general usage of Zoom and how to get your how to get your account set up. Um, and I'll also be going over some of the advanced features uh, with the software um, and how you can help use this to uh, deliver virtual care. Um, so a couple quick disclaimers before I go ahead and get started. So um, as this webinar does cover uh, everything from getting started to some of the advanced features, um, you may see some things here that you've already gone through and done. Um, and if you need to skip ahead to some of the advanced areas, um, feel free to go ahead and do that at this point, but we will be starting um, from the basics and going through all the advanced uh, features. So uh, just a heads up there. Um, another quick disclaimer is that uh, Zoom uses the term meetings to describe the virtual sessions that it creates. So the, the video conferences that are created within Zoom, it refers to as meetings. And you can think of this as being um, your patient appointments um, or your virtual health appointments as you're going through and booking meetings um, for, for your patients. So, um, and with, with this demonstration too, uh, I will also be using a mix of some live demonstrations using my own uh, Zoom account and my own Zoom software. Uh, and I'll also be showing a bit of screenshots um, as I already have Zoom open and some of my windows might look slightly different. Um, so you'll see a mix of screenshots and live demonstrations. So uh, one of the first parts of this is to get your account um, requested. So one of the first things that happens when you have, uh, when you get a Zoom account is you do need to request that account. Um, and basically to request an account, you would send an email to zoom at interiorhealth.ca um, and you would say, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get a Zoom account set up. And basically what we would do is we would email you back um, and and uh, collect the some some basic information we would need to get your account created. And then we would send the account um, off and get it created for you. So once the account gets created, you will get uh, an acknowledgement that will come back into your interior health email address. And this is what that acknowledgement looks like. So this acknowledgement here, it will say hello, and it will say your email address, and it will let you know that um, someone on our team has created a Zoom account for you. Uh, and then it just states to please click the button below to activate your account within 30 days. Now, if you're checking your Interior Health email address and you're looking for this activation email and you've realized that, hey, this email came in 30 days ago, um, or you've clicked on the activation button and it's not working for you, um, again, you just contact zoom at interiorhealth.ca and we can resend these activation emails out. Um, so don't worry about that if that's a problem you run into, but um, if the link is working, basically you'll click on this activate your Zoom account button. Um, and from there, you will go to a Zoom page where you will set up uh, the password that will go with your, your interior health account. So once you've created your account, the next steps are to look for the software and see if you have it pushed to your interior health machine. Um, and if you don't have it pushed to your machine, uh, we would need to go through and install it. So um, one of the ways we would go ahead and check this is you can just click on the start menu here and start to type in Zoom. Here I have Zoom installed and I can see that the application is here. But we'll say, for example, uh, I look and this application isn't there, or if I'm um, on a non-interior health machine, I'll have to download the software. So to download the software, you would open your web browser. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. And here I'm going to type in zoom.us. And this is the main um, Zoom website, and here, what you can do is you can go up to the top right hand corner. So up here, you can see a section where we can see request a demo. There's a phone number for, for Zoom and there's also a support section, but there's a resources section here as well. And when you mouse over the resources section, you'll see a drop down, 
and the top option here is to download the Zoom client. So if we click on this download Zoom client link, uh, what this does is this takes us to their download center. And the main thing we're going to be looking for here is going to be the Zoom client for meetings. So this is the platform you would need to download to start using Zoom. So here you would click download on this download button here, and this will download the software and you can go ahead and install it on your machine and begin using Zoom. So once you have the software downloaded, um, what it will look like when you first log in, uh, or when you first open it, sorry, is it's going to look like this. So here we can see uh, basically there's options to join a meeting. If you click on the join a meeting button, um, this will allow you to join a meeting as a guest without registering for an account, um, which is a feature that we have in Zoom. Um, or you can also click the sign in button and this will be how you sign into your account. Now, again, you can join as a guest, but that won't allow you to host any meetings. So as we're looking to host meetings, you do need to sign into your account. So we would click sign in. And this is basically what it'll look like when you get to the sign in page. So here they'll ask for your email address, which is the interior health email address we used to get your account set up. And then the password that would go along with your Zoom account. So here you would enter your username and your password and click sign in. There are options here for sign in with Google and sign in with Facebook. But these are not secure options and these are options that will not be there um, on the Interior Health client. So we do not recommend using that. Do use your Interior Health email address when you sign into your account. So once you sign into your account, this is what the home screen in Zoom looks like. And I'll just show you what it looks like in mine. And I'll just show you a couple quick differences. So here is the home area of the Zoom desktop uh, application when you first log in. Um, on mine here, it's a little bit different because I'm in a meeting at the moment. So I've, I've started this webinar, so some of my options are a little bit different. Um, but I will be showing you some of the features within my application. And then as I bounce between a screenshot and an application, I'll make sure you know which is which. So going back to the screenshot over here, um, one of the first things we'll be going over and just looking at is some of the ways that you can book your meetings. So we have this new meeting button. And what this does is this will allow you to start a new ad hoc meeting. So these meetings can be, um, you can start these on the fly if you know that um, you're going through your day and you know you have perhaps a, a patient who's eligible for virtual care um, and you happen to have the time period to see them, you can do a more ad hoc booking this way. Um, or we can also go down to the schedule option here, which is more for scheduled meetings. So say you are looking to schedule uh, six patient appointments for um, Wednesday, two weeks from now. You would go ahead and schedule each of those appointments um, using the schedule feature. Uh, you do have the feature to join a meeting from within the app. So if you know the meeting ID, of the meeting that you're looking to join. You can put that information in and join it that way. Um, you can have a session where you're just sharing your screen, um, or you can also use the call a room option to call into a room system. Uh, the main things we'll be going over in this webinar is going to be looking at the ad hoc meetings and also the scheduled meetings. Now, a couple other areas we'll go over with the uh, desktop app as we're looking at it, is we have the home screen here. So there's these icons up at the top, and these kind of take you through the different areas of the desktop app. And the main ones we'll be looking at is the home area and the meetings area. So I'm gonna go over to my desktop application here on the right side, and I'm going to show you what the meetings area is and what that looks like. So here I'm on the home screen and if I click on the meetings icon up here, it will take me over to the meetings tab. And here I can see all of the different appointments that I have booked and all the appointments that I have coming up. 
So here I have a couple appointments coming up over the next couple days. And what I can do is I can select these appointments and from within here, I can go ahead and uh, make some adjustments to them. So if I need to edit an appointment, I can click the edit button and this will allow me to edit um, some of the appointment details. Uh, I have the option to delete an appointment. So say if I have uh, an appointment I've been booked with a patient and they've canceled, I can go ahead and delete that. Um, I can copy the invitation. So say if the meeting inv invite didn't, uh, didn't go out for some reason, I can go ahead and copy that. Um, and I can also start the meeting. So every scheduled meeting that you book through Zoom using the schedule a meeting feature does need to be manually started. So when it's time for your meeting to begin, you would just need to come into the meetings area and click on the start button. Um, you can also see your upcoming meetings on the home screen sometimes. So here is that this, webinar that I've started today. I can see that this was starting at one o'clock and there was a start button here. So there's a couple different areas you can go to start the meetings, but that's an, an important area to look at. And again, that was just the meetings tab here. And I can switch between the two by clicking between them as I need to. Another area that's important when you're first getting started with the software is to click on and I'll just show you here. I'm going to get rid of my screenshot for a moment. Um, so if you look at the desktop app that I have here, and this is my own, so I'll show you some live demonstrations here. Um, we do have this settings wheel or this settings gear in the top right corner. And what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this settings gear. And what this does is this brings up our Zoom settings. So here, you can see my settings screen for in Zoom. And one of the first two things that we need to do is we need to configure our video source and we also need to configure our audio source. And this just enables um, our participants or our patients to see and hear uh, our content. Um, so one of the first things we'll do is click on the video uh, button. And this will show us all the video settings that we have set up in Zoom. So here I can see a preview of the device I have selected. So I can see my video here. And I also have a drop down uh, here where I can see the different vi uh, video sources that I have on my device. So here I have my external webcam. So this is a webcam that's actually mounted on the top of my monitor. Uh, and then I also have my integrated webcam. And this is the webcam that is on my laptop. It's physically mounted on the, on the laptop. I can choose to select this camera if I want, but as, this, uh, as my laptop is on a docking station at the moment, you won't see anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this, so you can see. And as I select that video source, I can't see any, any video feed from it, um, and I know it's the wrong source. So here I want my webcam I have on top of my monitor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the webcam here. And again, it does give me a preview so I can see that yes, I can see my video and I'm happy with the way that it looks. The next step is to click on the audio tab. And this is a very similar process. We're just gonna go through and configure our audio out or our speakers. So this is going to be where you hear um, people in your Zoom meetings. And then we also need to configure a microphone. So this is going to be your audio source for uh, your guests and your participants to hear. So um, what we would do, this is very similar to the webcam setup. So here we have a drop down where we can click and select the speakers that we have uh, connected to our device. So here we would see all of our speaker options. And when you select an, op an option that you want, you can go ahead and click this test speaker button. And you can see this pop up and what it does, is it just clicks test speaker to make sure you can hear others. And this will play a little chime and it just lets you know um, that you have the right audio source set up. Um, and then we have a similar process here for the microphone. So again, we have a drop down and we can select this drop down and see all of the different microphones we have on the device. We can select the microphone we want and then we can do a microphone test. 
So you can click this button and it just does a test to make sure others can hear you. So this test, it will just record you saying something and then it will play it back to you. And it just lets you know that your audio is configured and working properly. Um, here, we can also see a live reading off of the input level of your device. So this bar is jumping up and down as I talk and it's just letting me know that, hey, uh, the software can hear me. So again, you want to test your audio and then your video. And once you have that all configured, you're good to go ahead with the software. So we'll go back to my screenshots here for a moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, move my desktop application over here. And we're just gonna look at what happens when we start an ad hoc meeting, which is the first step we're gonna be looking at. And then we'll take a look at what does Zoom actually look like when you were in a meeting. So here uh, in this scenario, I'm just clicking on the new meeting button. So when I click on the new meeting button, what this is doing is this is going to start a new meeting for me on my machine. And this is what it looks like when you start that meeting. So here you'll see that the Zoom desktop application does look a lot different now because we have a meeting started and it looks very similar to how mine currently looks. Um, and here we can see this uh, window on the side, which is our actual Zoom meeting window. And we have a bunch of different controls here that I'll be going over on my application for you. So again, all I did here was click on the um, new meeting, which started uh, an ad hoc meeting for myself. So here we'll take a look at some of the controls within Zoom. So I'm just pulling my application back over here. Um, and here you can see all of my windows and all of the different things I have going on. So when you're in a Zoom meeting, the application you're interacting with is the same whether you were in a meeting that you've booked as an ad hoc meeting, um, a meeting that you've done as a scheduled meeting, if you scheduled the meeting in the web browser, yeah, when you start it, it still opens um, in the application you've downloaded. Um, and this really does look the same no matter what kind of meeting you're in. So let's go over um, what does all this stuff actually do and what does it mean? So let's start with the two two of the more important features we have here. So down in the bottom right, um, you will see these options here for uh, mute and stop video. So let's go over these first. Uh, basically what these features do is they the mute feature will mute your audio and the stop video feature will stop your video feed. So here if I wanted to click on stop video, what this does is this stops my video feed and it will display my username up here. So this is my first and my last name so that people know that I'm still the person who's talking. Um, and then when I'm ready to resume my video, I can go ahead and click start video again. Similarly with the mute feature, if I go ahead and click mute, you'll see that I'm talking, but you won't be able to hear anything that I'm saying. Um, so the next part of this is to just unmute yourself. And when you've unmuted yourself, everyone can hear what you're saying. Now for my recording that's going on, you might've heard my audio there as it's being picked up by another piece of software. So as you're listening to this and you see that I've muted myself and you've heard my message over my mute, um, that's what that's supposed to happen. Um, so just a quick heads up there, but yes, that's that stops your audio um, and that also will stop your video. Now we also have two up arrows that are beside the mute and the stop video icons. And these allow you to adjust your audio and your video options on the fly in your meetings. So here, if I needed to change my camera source in my meeting, I can click on the up arrow here. And what this will do is this will bring me a list of the different sources I have available. So here I have that integrated camera, which again is the camera that I have uh, physically on my laptop. So if I wanted to change this, I can click on integrated camera. And as I change that, you will see that my video feed has gone black because that um, video feed is on my laptop, which is again on a docking station. So we won't be able to see anything. And when I have seen that and I want to switch it back to my external camera, I can just click on the up arrow again 
and select the external camera. And this will bring my video feedback. So similarly, I can click over here on my audio sources and I can see all of my microphone sources here and all of my speaker sources over here. So if I need to change this as I'm in my meeting, I do have the ability to. So those are those two features. Uh, the next feature we're gonna go over is the participants pane. So here, um, when you first join a meeting or you first start a meeting, you may seem the, the participants pane is uh, not being shown by default. So there, uh, you saw something to disappear on the right hand side. That was just me clicking on the participants pane and that opens and closes it. So if I click on the participants pane again, we'll see all of the participants come back up onto my uh, my meeting here. And again, if I wanted that to uh, to disappear, I can click the participants pane again and that'll make it go away. Um, but here we're gonna go ahead and click on that pane. And this might look slightly different as I'm in a webinar right now, um, but the functionality is all the same when you're in normal meetings. So here in my webinar, I can, I have um, two separate areas here. I have one that is attendees and then I have another area that's panelists. And this shows everyone who is in this webinar and it sees the different um, roles. So here I can see that I'm the host and I can see that Chris is the co-host here. Um, when you're in a, an ad hoc meeting, you would just see your participants listed here and you would see the different um, participants you have in the meeting. Now, from within the participants pane, we have the option to invite people to our meetings. So there's this invite button just at the bottom of the participants pane. And we'll go over the invitation part in a, in, in a moment. I just wanted to um, let you know that we have that invite button there and we will be going over it. So um, a couple other features that we have that are within webinars that you wouldn't see in your meetings. We have the Q&A and the polls section. You really wouldn't see this in your uh, meetings that you're booking with your patients, but these are um, areas I'm just letting you know as you see those icons on my screen. Um, we also have a chat feature. So you can click on the chat icon and what this does is this just pulls up a chat window and you can choose to address your message to people by going over to the to drop down here and we'll see the options. So here I can select to send a message to all panelists or all panelists and attendees. Um, in your meetings you would see you can either uh, send your messages to all of your participants or you can message individual participants if you want to. So here I'll just go all panelists and attendees and I'll type hi and send that off. So that just is the chat window here. Um, the other option we have is we have a share screen feature. So this is here um, just beside the chat window and this enables us to share our screens in Zoom. Now that is a bit more of an advanced feature and I will be going over that later on in the meeting, um, but it's just good to know that this is where that icon is. The other thing we have in the bottom right is we have the end meeting function. So this button um, will basically end the meeting for um, yourself and all of the participants you have if you choose to do that. So when you end your meeting, you will see um, basically a pop-up that says, do you want to end the meeting for everyone or do you just want to leave the meeting? And you can choose to leave the meeting or end it for everybody. So that's the end meeting button and how that works. Uh, a couple other icons we have here. So we have this lock in the top left corner and you can just put your mouse over that and it will show you that the basically the meeting connection is secure and it just says that its connection is encrypted. So that just shows us that our, our meeting is a secure connection. Um, we have a clock here in the top right hand corner. This shows us the time of our meeting and then we have some view buttons. So here we have a couple different ways we can view the people in our meetings. So what you're looking at here is this is the gallery view is what it's called. And basically what this does is this shows all of your participants in your meeting 
on one screen. So here with this being a webinar, it performs slightly different. So as I have my attendees separate from my panelists, I don't see all the five attendees here, but if I did have them in as normal panelists in a meeting, this grid would be expanded and there would be a square for each person that I have in the meeting. And it basically allows me to see everyone's video feed in one spot while we're having our meeting. Um, the other view option is speaker view. And here, what this does is this basically uh, promotes the last speaker um, to be to be the person who you have in the large screen. So um, as it's not showing me my own video feed in the big screen, what it's showing here is this is, has Chris's video feed um, highlighted as he would have been, he's the only other person who can speak at this moment. But if we had um, multiple people in here and say Chris was talking, what this would do is this would show Chris's video feed front and center and it's a larger view. And then we would have the other video feeds above it. And basically, as people talk, uh, they would be sh they would be switched from being a smaller view up to a larger view. I myself prefer the val the gallery view. So again, you can just click this gallery view button, and it will take it back to the gallery view. We also have a full screen button here that allows the software to go to full screen if you want to use it that way. So really this goes over very quickly what the user interface looks like when you're using Zoom. Um, again, no matter what different type of meeting you're using, it does look a lot the same. So um, even with this being a webinar, a lot of the functionality is the same as the normal meetings that I'll be booking. So with Zoom, when we have our meetings, there's two, it's a two part, part process. Your first part is either start the meeting or book the meeting. Um, and then the second part is to invite people to the meeting. Um, so in, in with this demonstration and this example where we started the ad hoc meeting, we wouldn't have anybody in the meeting at this point. It would just be ourselves in there. So what we need to do is we do need to send an invite. And how we send an invite is just by using this invite button on the participants pane. So I'm gonna go ahead and click invite. And I'll show you what this does. So here this brings up the invite menu within Zoom. And you, this may change based on whether you're on an interior health machine with our pushed version of the software, um, or if you're on a downloaded software that you have, say, in a private clinic. Um, you may not see the contacts or the Zoom rooms area. You may just see uh, room system email or phone. So the main way we're going to be contacting people is through the email tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the email button here. And what this does is this brings us to a menu that shows a couple different ways we can send out our invite. So the first option is our default email client. And with Interior Health Machines, this would be Outlook. Um, if you are, again, not on an Interior Health Machine, uh, there's also options for Gmail or Yahoo Mail. And if you have these um, mail clients set up by default on your device, what it will do is this will open our default meeting invite in that application that you've selected. Now, if you are on a Windows Live uh, email account, or if you're using, say, uh, Thunderbird as your mail client, there's also an option here to copy your invitation so there's this button here at the bottom and basically what this does is it works very similarly to a word document when you're copying and pasting um, within a word document it's the same idea you're just copying the invitation and pasting it into whatever mail platform you're using so here i'm going to go ahead and click uh, the copy invitation button just to show you what that looks like so when i click copy invitation there's a little message that says it, that the invitation's been copied to the clipboard. And that's just gonna pop up here and I'll show you that one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click copy invitation and we can see that that's been copied to the clipboard. Um, now for, for this example, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna send this out through Outlook, which is my default email application. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click default email. And what this does is this brings up our default meeting invite in Outlook. So here, 
Uh, this will be a little bit different in a meeting as it would be a meeting and not a webinar, um, but this will show you basically getting the concept across. So we have uh, opened our invitation and we need to send it out to someone. Um, so here, this would be the invite to the meeting that would be in progress and you would just need to send this off to your participant or your patient. In this scenario, I'm going to send this to myself. So I'm just going to click my name and then I would go ahead and click send. And what this has done is it's taken the invite for the meeting that we're having and it sent it off to the person who would be joining. So here at this point, that person would be able to click on a link that is within that email. Um, and what that link would do is that would take them into the Zoom meeting that you're having. Um, you, and that's assuming that they've already downloaded the software. So that is the, the basics behind using Zoom is you create your meeting and then you invite someone to it. Um, and here we did an ad hoc meeting. So what we'll do is we'll get into the next step, which is looking at scheduled meetings. So I'm just gonna move my Zoom window. And bring my Zoom application back. So here we're going to look at the schedule meeting option. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the button to schedule a meeting. And what this does is this brings up the schedule a meeting window. So here we have some basic information we're gonna go over with the meeting. Um, so one of the first areas we're gonna look at is the topic area. So this is just the name of your appointment. In this scenario, I will call this test appointment number one. Um, so we put the topic in our, in our appointment and then we're gonna go ahead and select the start date and duration. So by clicking on the drop down here, if I wanted to book this say for uh, Wednesday, May 6th, I would just click Wednesday, May 6th, and then I can type in the time that I wanna have this meeting at. So say if I wanted to have this at 2.45, I can type in two, and then click on the minutes area and type in 45. And then I can go to the duration area. So if I wanted this to be a two hour uh, and 15 minute appointment, I could click two hours um, by clicking the hours drop down. And then I can also click the minutes drop down to select the minutes duration. So if I wanted two hours and 15 minutes, I would click uh, again, setting two hours and 15. Now, if I wanted to do a 15 minute appointment, um, what you would do is you'd click on the hours field and there's actually an option for zero hours. So you would just click zero hours and 15 minutes. And this would book me an appointment from 2.45 to three o'clock. Now with these appointments, these are soft times. So they, they aren't going to specifically cut you off if your meeting say goes on from um, 2.45 to 3.10, it's not gonna stop you at three o'clock. And it's also not going to prevent you from starting the meeting if it's not quite 2.45 yet. If it's say 2.35 and you wanna start your meeting early, you certainly can um, and it works both ways too. So you can start it early and end it late. These are soft time stops. So uh, just a note there. Um, a lot of these other settings we have here, we do have set by default. Um, and we have done this to go over some of the, the, the security features within Zoom. And we basically have these set by default to ensure that our meetings are as secure as possible. Um, so with these, there's very little reason to go in and actually change this, but I will go over what these features are so that you understand how they work. Um, but yes, do please leave these as default as we have gone through um, and, and set these up for, to be as secure as possible. So the first area is the meeting ID here. Um, and basically what we have by default is we do have automatic meeting IDs, which means every meeting that you book in Zoom will have a unique ID to it. So every meeting, um, no two meetings will have the same ID um, and every meeting will be unique. You can also choose the personal meeting ID, uh, but this is a, a very um, unsecure way to do your your meetings and we do um, recommend the automatic meeting IDs generated and we do have that set up by default. Um, the other option we have here is passwords which are enabled by default um, and every meeting is going to have a password to it. 
So again, every password is going to be unique and it automatically generates passwords for you. But if you wanted to click on here, we can go ahead and type in whatever password we want to put in. Um, and then again, we have our video features. So we have here, we can see hosts can have video and our participants can have video as well. Um, and then we have some audio options. So we have, uh, by default, we have this set up for telephone and computer audio. And basically that allows your patients to join um, through their computer audio or their smartphone audio if they want to. Um, but if they don't feel comfortable doing that and they can only dial in to the meeting, there is a telephone option as well. So they do have the ability to do that. Um, from here, we have our calendar options. So again, we have Outlook, we have Google Calendar and other calendars. Um, so again, what we'll do here is we'll just, for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll be going through Outlook. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Schedule. And what this does is this will open our default meeting invite that goes out to our patients. So here we can see the meeting invite that goes out when you invite someone to your to your appointments. And I'll go over some of the fields here so you can see what is some of the relevant information that your patient your patients will see. So here uh, it just says who is inviting you to a Zoom meeting. Um, and what this has is this will give the link for the Zoom meeting as well. So this link is a one-click link that the patient can use uh, to join the Zoom meeting. Again, if they have, this is assuming they have the software installed already, either on their computer or on their smartphone. Um, but basically what this does is this is a link that has your meeting ID and the password that you have set up embedded within it. So they don't click this link and then enter the password for the meeting. It's just they click the link and it takes them into the meeting. Um, so it's, it's a very easy process for uh, participants to join the host. Um, and, and then we have some notes here. So for a successful virtual care session, we're just recommending that patients do check their audio and their video uh, with the Interior Health Zoom test site 24 hours before their appointment. And what we have here is this is just the link for the Zoom test site. So this allows the patient to go through and test their audio and their video prior to your appointment. And the purpose for this is to ensure that the time that you've booked for your appointment is saved for clinical matters. Um, and this, so that you're not spending time going, you know, hey, is your microphone unmuted? Have you selected the right audio source? Have you selected the right video source? Um, this test site really does allow them to go through and configure this ahead of time. Um, also, when they click on the Zoom test site on their smartphone, if they don't have the application installed yet, uh, it will take them to the appropriate app store with the official Zoom app. So they can then go ahead and download that software and then do the test within it. So another area we have here is just if they're having issues downloading the application or connecting to the test call, there is a Zoom customer support number. So we have the support number here. And basically what this is, is this is, a, uh, this is Zoom's customer support area where they will go through and walk you through how to get the platform installed properly and how to get using it. Um, so they do have that option available to assist. And then we also have an option available here for if you have a particularly techy patient or if you want to look into specific support options yourself, there is a Zoom support site um, that is very thorough and has a lot of detail um, on everything from downloading the software and getting started to some of the advanced features I'll be going over today. So it's really detailed and it does have a lot of information there. Uh, the other information we have here, so we have uh, one tap mobile for your um, iOS users. So those are people who have iPhones. Um, and then we also have the dial in uh, by your location. So this is the number here that if the patient wants to phone in to your appointment, uh, they can simply dial this number and they'll be asked to enter the meeting ID and then the password that is associated. Um, and this would just allow them to join your meeting by phone only. Um, but yeah, keep in mind when they're joining that way, um, it would be strictly audio. Um, they won't have video at that point. So that goes over really what's in the invite. 
And like I said, we've booked the appointment going, going back to our appointment here. So we've booked it. We've opened our invite and now we're going to send it off to our patient, which in this case is going to be me. So I'm just going to head, go ahead and add myself to the invite and click send. So now I've got the invite and I would go through and uh, through my email and just click the, the link to join the meeting when it was time to start the meeting. Now the desktop application is one way you can interact with Zoom. There is also a web web based version we can use and I'll just go over what that looks like now. So I'm just going to move the desktop application over to my other monitor here. And I'll open my web browser. So we'll go back to the Zoom main website. And again, that is zoom.us. And here we're going to go through and take a look at what the web account looks like. So here um, I am already signed in. So I'm just going to sign out of my account very quickly. And then we'll just go through this. So here is the Zoom uh, main website. So when you get to this website, you're going to see uh, this section on the top right where I was talking about earlier. We had the resources area to download the client. Now we're going to be looking just below that and they have an option here um, for joining meetings, hosting meetings, uh, signing in or signing up. And here we're going to sign into our account. So you would just click sign in. Uh, when you get to the sign in page, you would enter your, again, your interior health email address. And the password associated. And you would just go ahead and click sign in. And this will sign you into your account. So here I'm going to go over some of the, the things that you see here. There's quite a bit. So um, we'll just go through it slowly so that you understand what is what. Um, first thing I'll point out is with my account, I do have an admin account and I have this admin area here. Um, on your account, you won't see that. So the main area you'll see on the left side is your, it's got uh, a couple different options here. So we have the profile tab, we have the meetings tab, we have the webinars tab, the recordings tab, and the settings tab. So if you click profile, this just shows your Zoom account profile and it shows some of the information on your Zoom account. Um, you can look in here if you need to make any adjustments. Um, the next area is the meetings tab. So when we click on the meetings tab, this is very similar to um, what we saw in the desktop application. It just has um, a little bit of information. It's just uh, slightly presented differently. So here we can see the dates and times of the appointments we have coming up. We can see the name or the topic of those appointments. And we can see the meeting IDs over here. We also have the ability to start the meeting if it's time for the meeting to be started or delete the meeting again if it's been canceled. If we need to edit the meeting, we can click on the topic area. So when we click on the topic for this test appointment, this will actually take us to the booking page. And here we can look at information such as sending out the invite, copying the invitation. If we needed to change meeting details, we can do that all here. Um, I'll go over some of those meeting details in a moment when we start going through booking things. Um, we have the webinars tab, and this would show uh, if you have webinar privileges, this would show where you would go through and book your webinars and when your webinars are occurring. Um, so that's the webinar area. With our Zoom accounts for Interior Health, the webinar feature is not turned on by default. So um, this is something that does need to be turned on on your account. So if you click on the webinars area and you don't see anything, uh, don't panic. That is how it's how it's supposed to be, and that's something we do have to enable on your accounts. Um, the next area is the recordings tab, and with Zoom we have disabled all cloud and all local recording. So really, there's not a whole lot of uh, reason for you to go to the recordings tab. There's not a whole lot to do there. Um, lastly, we have the settings tab, and this just shows the um, the settings that you have on your account. And this is a very long lengthy page and there's a couple um, shortcuts to different areas in the settings tab here. Um, but really a lot of your settings have been configured 
um, by our system admins to make sure that this is being utilized in the most secure way possible. So there's not a whole lot of reason to go into your settings uh, with the exception of scheduling privileges, which I'll get into in the advanced features. So um, one thing with the, uh, with the web client is there is this ribbon in the top right. So this ribbon in the top right will follow you no matter where you are on the site. So if I start scrolling down the settings, we can see that the ribbon is following me. And also if I were to click on the meetings area and start scrolling down my, my meetings, we can also see this ribbon follows me. And the reason this does this is this is where our main controls in the web client are. So similarly to the desktop client, how we can either book an ad hoc meeting or a scheduled meeting, um, or we can join a meeting, those, those buttons are right here on the ribbon. So if we go over host a meeting, this will host an ad hoc meeting. So this is an, again, one of those ones you can just host on the fly. And we can choose to do this with video on or video off, or we can choose to just do a, an ad hoc screen share. We have the join a meeting tab, which I can click on. And this will allow me to join a meeting. If I know the meeting ID, I can go ahead and type that in. And then we also have the schedule a meeting area. So here, this is where we would go ahead if we were going to, again, schedule, say, a patient appointment for two weeks from now. This would be where you would go through and do this. Now, what we'll do is we'll go through the process of booking um, another test meeting. So here, we'll go through this, and, and you'll see as we go through this, a lot of the information and the process is the same. It's just presented slightly different. So here's, again, some of the basic information we need to input. So we have the topic area. Here we would call this test appointment number two. We have a description, so you can enter a description for your appointment if you need to. And we're going to book a time. So I'll book, um, again, we'll go to May 6th. So I can click the calendar icon here, and this will bring a little drop down that shows the calendar that's coming up. Um, we need to go to May, so I'm going to click on the arrow here to take me over to the next month. And we'll go to May the 6th. And I'm going to book this appointment for 2.15. So here I can select the drop down for my hours. Um, and we will see that there isn't a 15 minute option. So we have 2 o'clock or 2.30. To do a 15 minute appointment, or if you need to book for say 2.15, you would click on 2 o'clock. And then you can actually click in the field. And you can hit backspace a couple times and then just type in 15 and press enter. And here this will actually book that for 215. Um, again, duration, if I wanted this to be two and a half hours, I would select two and then go to my hour, my minutes drop down and select 30. So two hours and 30 minutes. Or if I wanted this to be 15 minutes, I would select the hours drop down, go to zero, and then go to the minutes drop down and select 15. Um, from there, Again, a lot of this information is all configured uh, automatically with each meeting that we book. So again, a lot of this stuff you really don't need to go through and change. And then you would just go ahead and select save. So here I have saved my appointment. So this basically has, has done step one of the process, which is book the appointment. Uh, the next step is to actually send out the invitation. So here I can see the meeting that I've booked. So I've got the topic a couple different ways I can send it out here and all of the other configuration options here. The big things we're going to be looking at are these options to send out the calendar invite. So here I can open this within Google Calendar, uh, an Outlook calendar, or a Yahoo calendar item. Um, again, if you are using say Windows Live email or if you are using say Thunderbird as your mail client, there is also the option over here, if you go to the right hand side, there's an option to copy the invitation. And this is again going to be um, familiar to us as this is just like the copy and paste function you would see in a Word document. You would click the copy the invitation button and this will just bring up a, me a message that says, here's the, basically it says copy meeting invitation and it shows you our default meeting invite. And this has all of the same information 
And then there's a button here to copy it to the clipboard. And that's just where data goes when you're doing a copy and a paste. So when I click this button, you will see a little notification that pops up here that says it's been copied to the clipboard. So I'll just click copy and it says that it's been copied to the clipboard. And then I can open a new mail item in whatever platform I'm using and paste that meeting invite in. Again, if I click copy, there's that notification. It just shows me that it's been copied. In this example, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll send out an Outlook calendar invite again. So I'll click Outlook calendar. And what this does is this creates an Outlook calendar invite and just downloads it for me. So I would click on the bottom left here to open my Outlook invite. And this will open our default meeting invite within Outlook. So that's just loading that here. Here we are. So here we can see again that test or that default um, meeting invite. So here we see the Zoom meeting. Um, this is the one click link for the patient. So again, this has the meeting ID and the password within it. We have the uh, test site for the audio and video check for the patients. We have the support number and we also have the self-help documentation. So all that information is there. Now we just need to send this out to the patient. So we would click invite attendees. And here I'll have the, in, the option to send this to the person who's going to be in this meeting. So here I'm gonna send this to myself again and then just hit send. So now at this point, I've booked my meeting and I've sent it off to the patient. So at this point, I would be done with this meeting and I can go ahead and book my next appointment. Again, just by going up and scheduling a meeting. So um, as what you've, with what you've seen, really whether you're using the desktop application or the web application, the process is very similar. Data is just presented slightly differently. So what we'll do now is we're going to get into some of the advanced features with Zoom and look at how we can do things such as scheduling privileges. So scheduling privileges is um, a big advantage that we have within Zoom. Um, and what that does is that allows, uh, that allows someone to book on behalf of you when you are booking your appointments. And what we'll do here is we'll go over what that looks like and how you can configure it. So to configure scheduling privileges, you're gonna go over to the tabs on the left here, and we're gonna click on the settings tab. Again, um, this is the area where everything is, it's kind of configured for you. The only thing you really do need to set up is your scheduling privileges if you're going to use them. Um, so within your um, settings area, we'll get into, again, um, just configuring those scheduling privileges. But let's, I'll, I'll quickly go over what these are. So scheduling privileges are really good for physicians who say want to have their MOA be able to book on their behalf. So if you need to book on the behalf of a physician, um, or if you have multiple physicians or clinicians that you support, um, you can book uh, appointments for the various uh, clinicians that you're supporting. So to set that up again, we're gonna click the settings tab, and we're gonna look at these drop downs here on the left. So these are just some quick tabs that take us further down the page. We have schedule meeting, we have in meeting basic, in meeting advanced, email notification, and other. So here we're gonna click on the other tab, and this will take me right down to the scheduling privilege area, or it takes me very close to it, and you can just scroll down a bit. And here we'll see scheduling privileges. So here in this example, I can see that I have assigned scheduling privilege to six of the analysts that we have working on um, on telehealth and, and the Zoom product here. So I can see the people who can book on my behalf. Um, and I can also see the people that I can schedule for. So here, um, again, these are the people who have the privilege to book on my behalf. Um, and But I can schedule for um, the two people here. So the first one is my test account. Um, and then I also have uh, Chris's account. So this just tells me that I can book for my test account and for Chris. Um, and I can also see that everyone else here has the ability to book on my behalf. Now, 
to add someone to this, what I would do is click uh, this little plus icon beside assign scheduling privilege to. And what this does is this gives me the ability to add someone to um, my scheduling privileges. So here what you would do is you would enter the email address of the person that you want to be able to book on your behalf. Um, and they would just need to be an active Zoom user. So if you have an MOA that you want to book on your behalf and they don't have a Zoom account yet, you can request a Zoom account for them. Again, you would just email zoom at interiorhealth.ca and we would go ahead and get a Zoom account created for them. So once they have their Zoom account, you can add them here for um, your permissions for your scheduling privilege. Um, and then you would just put in their email address and click assign. And what that will do is that will bring them into this area here and you will see them added as being able to book for you. If the email you add doesn't have a Zoom account, you'll just see a little error that says the user you're trying to add isn't in your domain. And that just tells us that we need to get a Zoom account for the uh, email you're trying to add. So that is how you set up scheduling privileges on your account. So again, if you wanted to set that up for an MOA, if I was playing the role of the physician, I would come here, click on the assigned scheduling privilege button, and then put in my MOA's email address and set them up. Now let's take a look at what that looks like when we're scheduling meetings. So again, just going up to the ribbon here at the top right, I'm gonna click on the schedule meeting button. And this is gonna take us to the schedule meeting area. So here we're going to, again, there's all of the um, default information here and I'll just skip to the area that's different. So the area that's different when you have scheduling permissions set up is about halfway down we'll see this option here that says schedule four. So here I can choose to schedule this meeting either for myself, I can schedule this for my test account, or I can schedule this for Chris. And I would just click on who I want to schedule this for. Um, and I can choose to either, like I said, I can book this on behalf of one of those two people, or I can also book it for myself. Um, from here, I would go and put in all of the same default, uh, or pardon me, the meeting details. So topic, uh, date, time, duration, and then I would still have to send this off. But that really goes through the change when, when you're looking at the scheduling for. So again, that drop down beside it just shows everyone that you can book for. Now, if we want to take a look at what that looks like in the desktop application, I'll just bring that over here. So in the desktop application, if I click on the schedule button, this is going to bring up the schedule meeting window that we've gone over. And again, we would have our meeting details we would put in. Um, but the area that looks different when we set this up on the desktop application is actually in this advanced options area. So at the bottom, there's the option for advanced options and there's a little down arrow beside it. So we're just gonna click on that. And what that does is it'll show some advanced options here. And the bottom one that you will see is the option to schedule four. If I click on this box, what it will do is it'll put a little check mark there. And then there will be a drop down that shows up that allows me to select who I am booking this for. So if I could say book on behalf of five people, um, they would all be listed here. And I could choose to book this appointment. Again, if I'm an MOA supporting five specialists, I can book this on behalf of the appropriate specialist. Um, so here I would select my test account and then I could just click schedule and send off the, the invitation. Now, if I wanted to book this for myself, I can just uncheck the schedule for option. And what this does is this then books the appointment for myself um, and not on behalf of someone else. So really that covers the um, scheduling permissions. One of the next advanced features we're going to go over here is we're going to take a look at what's called the waiting room. So the waiting room is a function that we have on all of our Zoom meetings. Um, and basically what it is, is it's an area that when your guests join your meeting, they will be placed in a, in a separate area that's called the waiting room. And it's just a virtual area that keeps them separate from everyone else in the Zoom meeting. So they can't interact with you um, while they're in the waiting room. 
and they also can't interact with other people in the meeting. So say if you had three people in the waiting room, they wouldn't see that they're all there and they wouldn't be able to interact with, with each other. So it's just, it's a secure um, virtual area for them to wait until you're ready to see them. So what this looks like when you're in your meetings is you would see again, this is just, uh, just our meeting window. And what we have here is seeing that someone has entered the waiting room for this meeting. So I've got a little notification here. Um, this would be the person's name. In this scenario, I used a test account. Um, and then we have the options here to admit them into the meeting or to see the waiting room. Now, if you say miss this notification, you can also um, click on the more option or click on the participants button, which would bring up the participants pane. Um, in this example, I had the more option here because I had my window a little bit smaller, so it just moved partition participants over here. So again, you would just click on the participants button and that will show me the participants pane. And here, when we're looking at the participants pane, here we can see that I've got one person waiting. So in my meeting, I have this test user that is in the waiting room and I am in the meeting and I'm the host. So here I can see, okay, I have someone waiting. Um, and if this was say a patient appointment, I maybe I could use this time while they're in the waiting room to open say the their patient chart, um, open any, um, you know, if there's any scans or if there's an x-ray you need to go over with the patient, you can get all that information ready. And then you can admit them when you're ready to see them. Um, so here, this person is waiting. If I were to click the admit button, what this does is this brings them into the meeting as a participant. So here um, was the test person and I, this would be where the test person's video feed would be. Um, and basically um, in this in this scenario, I had my video muted on the test patient, so we can't see that, but this shows where it would be. And here we can see that they are now a participant in the, in the meeting. Now, if I needed to put the patient back into the waiting room, so say you're having your appointment and the patient says, oh, hey, you know, there was this thing from eight appointments ago, I wanted to go over with you again, um, and you don't have that necessarily ready to go. You can say, okay, I'm just gonna put you back in the waiting room and I'll get that documentation ready. Or if there's a scan they need to go over or something, you can choose to put them back into the waiting room. So to do that, you would just click on the more button and then mouse over to put in waiting room. And when you click on that button, it just moves them back over to the waiting room. So again, this what this does is this really puts the power um, in the host of the meeting. So they have the ability to admit people when they're ready um, and also put them back into the waiting room if they need to put them back in there. So here you could go and get that scan ready that, that uh, they were looking to go over um, and then admit them when you're ready to see them again. So there are a couple other things that really put the power in the hands of the host with Zoom meetings. Um, so one thing we'll do is we'll just make note of this remove button here. I'm gonna talk a bit about the remove feature in meetings. So say we're having this meeting and I have this person in the waiting room and this is a patient appointment I have. So I'm going to admit them for the patient appointment and I'm gonna to start to um, check their ID and make sure it's the right person uh, who I'm supposed to be seeing. Now, say this person actually isn't the person I'm supposed to be seeing, so this is the wrong person I have in this meeting. Um, I can choose to either A, put this person back into the waiting room where I can remove them from, um, or I can also select this more button and scroll down just to the bottom, just below put in waiting room, there's also this remove area. So again, it's, it's accessible if they're in the meeting, you would click on more, go down to remove, or if they're in the waiting room, the remove option is just beside admit. And, and what this does is this basically um, is an intentional removing someone from your meeting. So when you remove someone in this way, you will get a little pop-up that says, um, this person is going to be removed permanently from this meeting and they won't be able to rejoin. And basically this is just a security uh, measure that we have that basically means if whatever link that person clicked on to get into their meeting, that won't work anymore if you've removed them intentionally from it.
So here we would click remove and this person won't be able to get back in. Now, what that doesn't mean is that say if you have um, a patient in your meeting and say their internet um, drops for a moment, that's not them being intentionally removed. That's them having connection issues. And basically, if your patient has connection issues, they can rejoin the appointment. That's not a problem. That link will still work for them. It's only when you intentionally remove someone that they won't be able to rejoin the meeting. So again, this really does put the power um, in the hands of the host, and it gives you full control over the people in your meetings. Um, and you do have the ability to remove people um, if you need to. So uh, another advanced feature we're going to go over here is going to go back to the screen sharing, which is a feature I've been using quite a bit uh, throughout this demonstration. So what we're going to look at here is just some screenshots of a screen share that I did. So when you are in a meeting and you click on the share screen button, what this does is this will give you um, a couple options. So when you click on the share screen button, it will allow you to share one of your monitors if you have, say, two monitors connected. Um, you also have the ability to share a specific application. Say you just want to share um, a PDF that is, you know, a scan you wanted to share with a patient. Um, or you also have the ability to share just a blank whiteboard. So if you just needed to make a couple quick notes or draw something out as you're, as you're explaining something, you can do that as well. Um, in this example, I'm sharing one of my monitors. So here we can see this green square around the screen that I'm sharing or, or the content that I'm sharing. Um, and then we see a lot of the meeting controls have just moved up to the top here. So here I still have the ability to mute and stop my video. I have the ability to go to the participants pane um, and I have the ability to um, stop my share. So if, I'm, if I've shared my content on my screen and I'm done, I can click on the stop share button. I can pause my share. So say I'm, if I'm sharing one thing and then I need to pause for a moment um, and, and bring something, out, something else up on the screen, I can choose to pause it. Um, and then we also have the option for annotation. So annotation allows you to draw on the content you're sharing. So I'll show you what that looks like here. In this example, I've opened a notepad and I've just said that, you know, this note, this notepad could be content you could share. So we'll say if this was an x-ray, um, we'll just assume that's what this notepad is. Um, and we'll just see that um, we can annotate and draw on it. So here um, we have some options on this other drop down. And the first one we're going to look at is the format option. So when we click on format, we'll see the ability to select the color that we want to annotate with. We have line width and we also have the font size. So if we wanted to type something in, we can type something in. Uh, we have the eraser tool, which you can use to erase annotation you've done. Um, you have the spotlight tool, which basically allows you to spotlight your mouse. So if there's something specifically you wanted to show, you could circle over it with your mouse and your mouse icon will just be spotlighted. Um, you also have the stamp feature, which is just some basic, you know, checks or arrows if there's specific things you want to show. And then we have the draw feature, and that's really where you would click on draw, um, and then you have the ability to, like I said, you can draw on this. So um, here, if we wanted to highlight something specific on an x-ray, we can circle it and show it to the patient. Now, with the annotation, if, if your patient is on the smartphone application, um, a really nice feature of this is they actually have the ability to zoom in on what you're annotating. So this is particularly useful for people who are maybe um, visually impaired or have um, you know, issues seeing things on, on their smartphones, um, similar to how a lot of photo galleries um, on your, on your phones, how you can zoom in on your smartphone pictures, you would zoom in on the same way just by pinching on the screen and dragging your fingers out towards the edges. And, and what that'll do is that will zoom, have, zoom in on the content that you're sharing. So it's pretty useful for, again, for visually impaired um, people. 
So once you've finished annotating, you have the ability to clear your drawings and you would just click the clear icon and then go down to clear all drawings. And what this will do is this will clear up all the annotations and then you can go ahead and click stop share or click the X button here to stop annotating. Uh, and really that goes over a lot of these screen sharing features. Uh, the next thing we'll go over, speaking of the smartphone app, is we'll just take a look at what does the smartphone app actually look like. So, here I'll just bring my screenshots that I have actually taken. Um, basically, I took these screenshots on my own phone uh, using the Zoom application. So this is on an Android phone, so it might look a little different on an iPhone. Um, and basically, this is the home screen from within the Zoom application. And what I've done at this point is I opened the application and I signed into my account. Um, from here, I can see a couple options. So I have the ability to start a new ad hoc meeting if I wanted to do an instant meeting. Again, very similar to how you would book uh, book this within the desktop application or the web application. You can also do it within the mobile. Um, we have the ability to join a meeting if we know the specific meeting ID. And then we have the ability to schedule a meeting as well. So if we want to say schedule a meeting for two weeks in advance, we can do that from here as well. Um, what else we have here is this is very similarly to the desktop and the web app. We do have a meetings tab as well. So if I clicked on the meetings tab or tapped on the meetings tab, what it would do is bring me to all of the meetings that I have coming up over the next couple days. Um, and here from within these meetings, I can choose to select a specific meeting. I can either edit the meeting, I can send the invitation, um, or I can start that specific meeting. Um, I can also go down the, the side here and start a specific meeting. So if I wanted to start the meeting on April 8th, I would just click start. Now, when you start a meeting, uh, what it looks like in the mobile phone is, again, very similar to what you see on the desktop. It's just presented slightly differently. So here we still have our mute features, our start and stop video feature. We have the ability to share content. Uh, we have the participants pane, which would allow us to invite people to the meeting. Um, the, and then we have the end button, which is, it's not on the bottom right anymore. So the end button, has gone up to the top right. And that just is where we would go ahead and end the meeting. So we could end the meeting for everyone, or we can just leave the meeting ourselves. So here we can see that. We have the little lock that shows that the call is encrypted and it's a secure connection. So in this scenario, we'll click on the participants pane. And here we can see the participants in the meeting. So here I would see if anyone was in my waiting room, um, here I would also be able to go and invite people if this was, was an ad hoc meeting. So here I have the invite button, which is just down um, at the bottom here. So here we can see we've got chats, we have invite, and then we have some mute functions as well. So um, from here I would click invite and then send the invite out to the person I wanted to join my meeting. Now if I wanted to schedule a meeting, I would just click on the schedule button from the home screen. And here is what the schedule a meeting option looks like on a smartphone. So again, we can see the topic, we have the date, um, we have the duration, uh, and then really a lot of those other features are enabled by default. Um, and from here, you would just go ahead and click done, and that would open your invitation, which you would send off to the patient. So really what that does is that goes over a lot of the um, advanced features that we have within Zoom. Um, and we have one last section we'll go over here. So uh, as you start using Zoom, if you find that um, you need additional resources or, you know, if you're, if you're using Zoom, say two weeks from now and you can't exactly remember how something was done or you want additional information on what we have for Zoom, you can access this by going to the Interior Health website. So here I'm just going to go to the main interior health website. And from here I can go over to the about us area, which is just on the right hand side. 
and we're gonna scroll down to the physicians area. From the physicians page, what we're going to be looking for is just on the left hand side, and we just need to scroll down to this section here, which is called virtual care. So this is our virtual care page, and this virtual care page does have a lot of information on Zoom. So here we have our Zoom quick start guide. We have our Zoom uh, clinician and staff information guide. We have some frequently asked questions for Zoom. And we also have a client guide. We have additional details here. So we have some additional guides um, and just information for you for using Zoom. And really this, this information does cover um, all of the be best practices for, um, for virtual care. And this is up to date with all of our most current um, Zoom documentation. So if you are using Zoom, do check this area out. There's a lot of really useful um, information available for you. The other thing I will say is we also have a support team that is available to um, help with the Zoom requests. So I myself am on the support team and Chris is on the support team as well. Um, and we've got all of our virtual care members on that team as well. And basically what we're doing is we're um, dealing with the Zoom requests when they come in and we're also offering one-on-one um, -on -one training. So if you do have questions about Zoom or again, if you're looking at this you know, a week later from now and you don't remember how I've done something or it doesn't quite make sense and you need additional um, help with that, uh, do email zoom at interiorhealth.ca um, and we do have people available to support. Um, so again, that email is zoom at interiorhealth.ca. Other than that, that covers uh, everything that I had scheduled for this webinar today. So thanks a bunch for your time. Um, and again, if you have additional questions, please email zoom at interiorhealth.ca um, or you can email myself and I'll be there to assist. So um, thanks a bunch for your time and have a great day.